This is I Am Robert A. Brown Ministries. The following is a recent Sunday morning message given by Pastor Robert Brown. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The Gospel of John, chapter 11, verse 25. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As you're turning to your pages, amen, let me set this scripture up for you. Amen. Jesus had uh, engaged in miracle working and sharing of the word in Jerusalem and hallelujah uh, had stirred some controversy with the religious leaders. Amen. They didn't like that this man was getting all this attention and turning the hearts of the people away from them as leaders into him. Amen. And then he had a friend named Lazarus and Lazarus became sick and his sisters sent word to Jesus to come and see him because he's sick. Do something about it. Now, Jesus uh, understanding the bigger picture of things. Amen. Delayed his coming to Lazarus. All right. Why did he do that? Well, there was an ancient uh, Hebrew understanding that they believed that the spirit of a person hovered above their body for three days. And that the person could be revived within those three days and it wouldn't be such a big deal because it was common in their thinking. Okay, so what did Jesus do? He waited to come on the fourth day day so there could be no uh, argument that this was truly a miracle of God all right now being human when he sees these uh, Lazarus does go on to die and being human when his sisters come and see Jesus why didn't you come earlier you could have saved him where were you and oftentimes, and let me say this to the leaders and, and, and we as Christians in general, amen, glory to God. There will be times when people look for you to be there when you want them, when they want you to be there. But there's a timing when God releases you, if he does release you, to be in the situation. Amen. amen. We as humans, sometimes we look away from God and we look to the natural. And that's what Martha and Mary did because they didn't understand something. They didn't understand what Jesus was about to say to them. Here's our scripture, amen. John eleven twenty five. 25, we're reading from the King James Version. He says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Saints, the foundational teaching of the Christian life is the doctrine of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is not the cross, it is the resurrection. He could have just died on the cross and that was it. And we would have been like every other religion in the world, worshiping the doctrine of a dead man. But he got up. The key to Christianity is believing that we don't serve a dead man, but we serve someone that is alive. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We serve someone that is alive. Hallelujah. And his life was the cause of the church exploding on the world scene. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So this week, amen, glory to God, our message this week, amen, is the power of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Amen. The power of his 
resurrection. Father God, we come before you in the matchless name of Jesus. You've once again tasked me, Lord God, with something that's too great for me, Lord God. Hallelujah. That is sharing your word, Lord God. You are the preacher. You are the teacher, Lord God. Unfold the mystery and the power of your resurrection to your people today, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give them hearts that are open to receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we won't fail to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor because you do all things well. In Jesus' name, let me hear somebody say amen. 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 Let's get into it. Hallelujah. The power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. To to gain a greater understanding, amen, let's do a brief word study, amen. Glory to God. Let's look at the word resurrection, amen. In the Greek, it is anastasis, hallelujah. We know that uh, the words of the New Testament were written in Greek because it was the world language at the time. Just like English is the world language today, Greek was then, hallelujah. Matter of fact, it was Kone Greek, hallelujah. But resurrection means anastasis. It literally means stand up or stand again, What Jesus was really saying is that he is the author of resurrection. Quite simply, he was saying, I am God. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. In other words, I am God. Is there anything too hard for me? Saints, I want you to think about this for a while. Is there anything too hard for God in your specific life? We often make things too hard for him in our own minds. Is there anything too hard for God? It's what he was saying to her. I am the resurrection and the life. And, and I want you to understand it like this. Amen. Uh, I, I was listening to something last night. It was uh, uh, Benny Hinn. Holiday was sharing something. And, and, and I'm going to compare uh, Jesus saying, I am the resurrection and the life to what Benny Hinn was saying. What he said is, God doesn't exist. He's existence. If God existed, it means that existence would be greater than him. And he would not be God. So God doesn't exist. He is existence. It flows from him. He is the source of all existence. And he also said that uh, hallelujah, please bring it back to my memory. He shot that up, I shot that. Oh, I got it, hallelujah. Praying in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, I got it. God doesn't live in eternity, God is eternity. God, God can't live in something greater than him, otherwise he wouldn't be God. God is eternity, hallelujah, glory to God. So to be with God is to have eternity. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So by the same token, amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. In other words, he is God. I know there's a lot of people of other religions that say, when did Jesus ever say he was God? Hallelujah. He said it right here. I am the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. I am God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go to our next word, life. Amen. We've heard this before. Zoe. Zoe is life, physical and spiritual. It always only comes from and is sustained by God's self-existent life. In other words, he is the author of life. Jesus is the author of life. He is the source of life. He's saying, I am God. I, I am the source of resurrection or for you to stand again. Amen. I am the source of life. So he was telling her, I'm going to raise him. I'm going to raise Lazarus from the dead. I am the source of the resurrection or for him to stand again in bodily form. Amen. And also spiritual form. Amen. And I am life. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I will speak life into him again. And God can speak life back into your life again. Hallelujah. If you allow him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But then it begs a question, amen. What does the power of his resurrection mean? What does the power of Jesus' resurrection mean? We say that. We sing it in songs. But what does it mean? What is the significance, amen? Glory to God. Let's, let's take a look at this, amen. We're going to go to Philippians 3 and 8. 
here in Philippians 3 and 8, Paul, in this passage, amen, of Scripture, Paul is arguing about, hallelujah, the grace of God. And he's doing that by way of uh, saying it's not about what family you came from. He was a Hebrew, a Hebrew of Hebrews. He described himself circumcised on the eighth day. Uh, he had done many works as a Hebrew, amen, uh, before he became a believer, amen. He still remained a Hebrew, but he became a Hebrew believer, amen, glory to God, after he accepted Jesus Christ and his resurrection, hallelujah. So he's, he's pointing to, hallelujah, Jesus' work and not his own, amen. And we should all look to what Jesus did and not ourselves, hallelujah. Religion has caused us to look at our own efforts to gain salvation or to go to heaven as opposed to what the Bible teaches is Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus is the author and finisher of our salvation. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He's the one that brought it about. Amen. Glory to God. So let's read together. Hallelujah. I'm going to read. Amen. Starting at verse 8. It says, Yea, doubtless. This is Paul speaking to the Philippians. He says, Yea, doubtless. I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Amen. In other words, he had renown. Amen. He was well respected. Hallelujah. W within the Hebrew community. Amen. But he counted all that lost that he might know Jesus Christ. You have heard me say the testimony, amen. When I committed to Christ, amen, I lost all my friends. Wasn't fun. Didn't feel good. Felt strange. But I loved Jesus. And more importantly, I knew he loved me. That's more important. Hallelujah. So he counted it all lost to know Christ. Amen. Glory to God. For whom I have suffered loss of all things. Oh, we don't like to suffer anything. As human beings, we don't like to suffer. I, I tell you, I'm the pastor, but I don't like to suffer. I don't like to suffer. I don't like to go without what, what I want. Amen. Human nature wants what it wants right now. I want that parking space. I want that sale. I want my way. I want, I want, I want. That's human nature. It wants what it wants when it wants it. And to suffer, amen, hallelujah. There, there better be some great love, amen, for me to suffer. And thank God there was. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And this is what Paul is unveiling to the Philippians here. Hallelujah. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung. Y'all know what dung is, amen. Do I need to go into that, amen? dung okay we'll leave it there amen that i might win christ hallelujah or have a relationship with christ verse 9 and be found in him not having mine own righteousness uh oh here's this man that wrote 13 books of the new testament and some think hebrews as well which would make it 14 amen glory to god not bragging about his own righteousness which to you and i he could because we'd believe him but he's not bragging about his own righteousness or his own self-efforts to be holy. What is he doing? Hallelujah. Which is of the law or for our purposes, which would be of religion. But that which is through faith of Christ. In other words, righteousness. Amen. We're not going to turn there. But according to Romans 5, 17, is a gift of grace by the Lord Jesus Christ, giving to those that believe in him. Amen. Glory to God. At its core, righteousness means, hallelujah, I am now in right standing or right relationship with Father God. Why? Because someone, this someone being Jesus Christ, died and paid the penalty for my sins for the entirety of my life, past, present, and future. If you don't believe he paid for all the sins of your entire life, amen, then you think you will have a back and forth, in and out relationship with God that one day he loves me, another day he doesn't love me. One day he loves me, on, on Friday he doesn't love me. On Sunday he loves me, but on Monday he doesn't love me. And it is, it is a relationship, amen, hallelujah, that is confusion. The fact that Jesus died and died for us and paid for all of our sins, amen, means that we have a consistent relationship with God for the balance of our lives if we so choose. We try to attribute our human relationships to a relationship with God. You're friends with your best friend and then she does something you're not friends tomorrow. 
you friends with your boy and then he steals your girlfriend and then y'all not friends. You know, yeah, all this mess we get caught up in as human beings. It's not so with God. He is with you through thick and through thin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Righteousness is by faith. I didn't make it up. It's in the book. I'm not even reading from a different version today. This is King James. Righteousness is by faith. It's not by what you wear. It's not because I have on a suit today. Amen. Glory to God. That's a little tight. It's not because I got a haircut, amen, hallelujah. It's not, it's, it's by faith. By faith. And y'all know I've had like 15 suits at one time, and I had ostrich shoes, and I had all these Alibaba shoes, and I had these things, but it did not equate to righteousness. Those are my attempts to be righteous. Righteousness is by faith. Faith in what? In Jesus Christ and him dying at the cross, paying for all of my sins. All right. Verse 10. Amen. Is our verse is our verse of focus. Amen. Why? He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. This is, where, this is what Paul was trying to come to, that he might know him. Amen. And we're going to break down these words, amen, so that we have an understanding. Because we, we quote the scripture, but we don't really know what it means. Let's break it down. Amen. We're going to look up all these words in yellow. Hallelujah. Real quick. I'm going to try to do it quick so I'm not before you too long. Amen. Glory to God. The first word, know, in the Greek is ginosko. Hallelujah. It means to know, especially through personal experience, firsthand acquaintance. God wants you to have a personal relationship with him hallelujah one that is intimate we talked about this weeks ago what does intimate mean sharing of your innermost thoughts and feelings amen hallelujah that we share our innermost thoughts and feelings with god and that nothing is hid amen and in return he shares his innermost thoughts and feelings with us i.e revelation amen. revelation comes through an intimate personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And once we have an intimate personal relationship with him, it will enhance our human relationships. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If we want it to. It's all about our wills. Hallelujah. To know him and the power. Amen. This word power in the Greek. Amen. Is dynamus. Amen. It's the ability to perform for the believer. It's power to achieve by applying the Lord's inherent abilities, not your own, to a given situation. Power through God's ability. Dynamis is needed in every scene of life to really grow in sanctification and prepare for heaven. I need God's power on a day-to-day -day basis in every situation in my life if I'm going to represent him. But what often happens as human beings, amen, one day we're on and one day we're off. And one day we got the glory and the next day we're in the dumps. But I need and you need and every believer on the earth needs his power every day in every scene of life. In the New Testament, the power which the resurrection of Christ has for instructing, reforming, elevating, tranquilizing the soul. We need his active power in our lives to live a great quality of life on this side of heaven. We've been trying to do it in our own strength. You've been trying to be that Christian at the job in your own strength. You've been trying to be that Proverbs 31 woman in your own strength. You've been trying to be that macho Christian man in your own strength, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. We need his power. Amen. Hallelujah. Next, next word, fellowship. Amen. Is a word we've heard before, konania. Konania, properly, what is shared is common as is the basis of fellowship, partnership, community. So in other words, amen, 
as I partake of God's spirit, amen, the spirit of Christ, amen, the Holy Spirit now lives inside of me. And what, what is God's, or let me more specifically, God the Son, what is Jesus's, is now mine and yours. And we take it further, amen, now what is mine, as Brother Robert or Pastor Brown or whatever you want to call me, amen, is now yours. And what is yours is your sisters or your brothers. And hallelujah, the cornelia is hallelujah where everyone, amen, because they receive what they need from God, can be generous with one another, first in uh, our personalities towards one another, how we treat one another, and if necessary, amen, if you have more of goods or, or money or services, then you'll be a blessing to your neighbor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got a little extra joy. Amen. Share it with your neighbor. A little extra peace. Share it with your neighbor. But the key is not to look for your neighbor as your source, but everyone all together looking to Jesus as their source and then sharing with one another. Well, we get caught up in, hallelujah, ain't nobody love me at that church. But what you fail to understand that you go to the source of love yourself. You try to bypass Jesus and go to your neighbor. So you get what you get. See, God allows us to go through things so that we learn and we grow. And I can hear him saying, stop looking to your neighbor and look to me. Stop looking to your best friend and look to me. Stop looking to your pastor and look to me. Amen. Hallelujah. I know I didn't get too many amens on that. Amen. Next word. Hallelujah. Suffering. Pathema in the Greek. Strong feeling includes affliction, suffering, which should always ideally result in knowing God's glory, like going through difficulties, persecution, etc. in faith. Oh, Lord. I would like to tell you that there's no suffering as a Christian, but I would be lying to you. Matter of fact, sometimes you suffer because you are a Christian. But guess what suffering does? It puts me in a position where I learn to lean on God, hallelujah, as those that gave their testimonies today have testified that they've done, hallelujah. And in going through it and seeing him deliver me from situation to situation to situation, I, I've spent a lot of time talking to him during that situation. I've spent a lot of time getting to know God through the situation. And the little and lo and behold, amen, I start to grow, amen, as God leads me through the valley of the shadow of death, hallelujah. I come out on the other side and I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy strength, they comfort me. Suffering allows the believer to get to know God in an intimate way. When I lost all my friends, what friend was left? Jesus. And because I lost all my friends, now they, many of them will come back and some of them come to the church and you've seen them and hugged them and all that stuff, hallelujah, glory to God, we've come full circle. But because I lost my friends, I can stand before you today as Pastor Brown. Let me connect with you. I don't like suffering. He ain't telling you you got to like it, but it's a part of the journey. Why? We live in a fallen world. Adam and Eve made a choice that has affected all of us. And thus suffering is a part of this existence. But through suffering, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Through the suffering, God uses it for his glory that we might get to know him more intimately, more personally. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That we have a testimony. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That we overcome the enemy by the blood of the land. That, that what he did at the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. And the word of our testimony about how Christ brought me out of this difficult situation time and time again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Next word. 
conformable. In the Greek, it's simoru, sem, semorfu, semorfu. All right, I got it. Hallelujah. <laughs> it means properly sharing the same form from embodying the same inner essential reality to be conformed or empowered to behave in a manner that lines up with Christ to the glory of of Christ. Amen. As I get to know him, as I go through and he brings me through every trial, every test, every situation. Amen. Glory to God. I start to become more like him. I start from the inside out, from the inner man to my outer behavior, start to perform and behave in a way on a daily basis that represents Christ and not myself. Because in reality, amen, glory to God, what the world teaches us, amen, glory to God, is go out there and represent yourself. But Christianity, amen, I'm supposed to represent Christ. That's not to down your culture, your particular things, amen, glory to God. But he's taught me how to weave through and to sort, amen, the things that give him glory and the things that don't that are part of my African-American culture. Some things give them glory, some things don't. But, hey, I'm still a work in progress. I'm still sorting through it. Amen, glory to God. Because even when I joke with Raven, amen, maybe sometimes I need to sort through that a little bit better. Amen. Y'all should see me looking, her, see her looking at me right now, y'all. Hallelujah. I got the stare. The daddy stare. Oh, daddy. Silly daddy. Let's look at the next word, death. Amen. Thanatos. Sounds like a moral villain to me here. <laughs> Thanatos. That's all they did, man. They slapped the Greek name on the dude. The dude's name was death, amen, basically. Thanos means death, amen. The, the Avengers were, were fighting death, amen. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? They were fighting death, amen. Glory to God. You know superheroes are just trying to mimic Christ. He's the only superhero there really is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Anyway, back to our word, Thanatos, to, f to free from the fear of death, to enable one to undergo death fearlessly. The biggest fear that human beings have is death. We don't want to die. Matter of fact, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he didn't want to physically die either. He didn't want to suffer that. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. When you know whose you are, when you have an intimate personal walk with Jesus, when him bringing, through, him bringing you through the various and multitude of trials and tribulations that we all go through through life time and time again, and you can count on him, and then you are transformed from the inside out, amen, and your behavior represents him every day because of your walk with him, your relationship with him, how he's delivered you on, from, uh, on a time uh, and time again basis. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you know that he is alive. He's not dead. He is the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. You no longer fear death because you know I will live forever. Amen. Although this physical body might dissolve. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In my spirit, baptism from the body, present with the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. And then at the trump. Amen. I shall receive my new body. Hallelujah. With the six pack. Amen. And the Jerry curl. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I want that heavenly aloe vera, amen, just going through my hair, amen. I want them finger waves, hallelujah. On a serious note, amen, we don't fear death because he got up, we shall get up. If it stopped at the cross, we had no guarantee that we would rise again. But it didn't stop at the cross. He got up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's put this all together. Well, the pastor, what does that all mean about the power of resurrection? All right. Let's let's read. Let's read it here. Amen. Hallelujah. To know Jesus and the power of his resurrection is to know him beyond the doctrine written about him, but to know him experientially as like when you go through trust and trials and he delivers you to identify with him, even as you go through difficulties of life. Hallelujah. The difficulties of life to give him glory, even as you're going through to be fully persuaded of the assurance of your own 
resurrection would freeze you from the fear of death, quite simply to know Jesus intimately. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To know him intimately. Because you've been through stuff together. Me and this woman have been through 26 years of things together. I know her. She knows me. I know she's not going anywhere. She knows I'm not going anywhere. We've been through it together. I know she has my back. She knows I have her back. Hopefully she's a green and not in her head as I say this. I was saying it by faith. <laughs> My children, we, we've been through 23 and 21 and 19 years together. We know each other. There's some small details they may not know about me but they know me and whether they know it or not I know them amen let's let's take this to a greater scale with Jesus the power of his resurrection amen is to have a relationship with Jesus and have years of experience with him and have gained confidence because of all he's delivered you from and because he rose from the dead you know that one day you will rise from the dead. Amen. Glory to God. So to not fear death or feel fear repercussions because you represent Christ. Hallelujah. That you will go through things. If I, if I go through things because I'm representing Christ, he shall deliver me from those things. Amen. And give me a greater door open. Amen. If a window shuts. Hallelujah. Because of my representation of him. You know, I ain't going to share Christ because, you know, I might, you know, uh, I might lose some friends. Well, if you lose those friends, he'll open up a door. Amen. For friends. Amen. Hallelujah. That you'll have in Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I got to turn here for a second. He just popped it in my head. Hallelujah. I, I'm going to bring it to relationship wise. I'm not talking my husband and wife. Y'all are, li- are in covenant together. Amen. Say hallelujah for being in covenant with your husband and wife. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the singles right now. If the person leaves because you are after Christ, then that person was never meant to be there. But I love him. Oh, I love her. Brother Pastor, you're just mean and insensitive. You don't understand what I go through. I love him. His mother allowed me to be placed on her oil bill, so now I have the oil bill in my name of my boyfriend's mother. I love that girl, you know what I'm saying? She loved my mother, the co-sign with her so that my mom got a car now you know what I mean I ain't making this stuff up these are real life things that happen saints if they don't love you for how you are in Jesus and the principles that you want to live out then they are not for you. And, but here's the best part. God has someone greater for you Amen. from the sense of tailored for you. Yes, yes. Not great because he loves everybody and I'm no better or greater than anybody else. But for she was better for me based on the calling and the purpose of my life. And I was better for her based on the purpose and calling of her life. Amen. If you're mad already, get on your, you need to just pray. Hallelujah. You got to pray, amen. And get to know Jesus better as you go through. That's what me and Durette do. Hallelujah. We pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go to the next one. Hallelujah. The truth of Jesus' resurrection is the foundation of Christian belief. The resurrection is the most important thing that ever happened 
to the Christian church or to believers everywhere. The resurrection is the greatest thing that has happened. Amen. Glory to God. Let's take a look at it. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to 1 Corinthians 15, 12. 1 Corinthians 15, 12. I'm reading from the King James Version. This is Paul, hallelujah, sharing with the Corinthians. Amen. Uh, he, he, the, uh, the teaching or the doctrine of the resurrection. Amen. He said, now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? The, it's not fully explained, amen, glory to God, but through historical research and testimonies of those uh, back during the first century, there were Pharisees and Sadducees who did get saved. Religious leaders, amen. Now the Sadducees, amen, this religious sect, amen, within uh, um, the uh, Hebrew religion, amen, or, or Judaism, amen, did not believe in the resurrection of the dead. So he's saying to them, how is some of y'all, how can you be a Christian if you don't believe in the resurrection of the dead? Now I know saying that in front of non-believers will make you look like a fool. You believe in the resurrection of the dead? How foolish are you? But God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. As a Christian, it is incumbent upon us to believe that Jesus is not dead, but that he is alive. Amen. Amen? That's, that's, that's foundational. Amen. Glory to God. Let me read this again. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some, some among you that there is no resurrection of dead? Question mark. Verse 13. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. If there's no resurrection, then we have no risen Savior. Oop, I'm missing a scripture. I'm missing verse 14. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me borrow somebody's Bible. It did not transfer to the iPad. Hallelujah. You have it there. Amen. Sister Ida has it open already. Amen. Verse 14, and if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain. And your faith is also vain also. If Christ did not rise from the dead, there's nothing to preach about. There's nothing to talk about. There's nothing to share. Verse 15. Yea, and we are found false witness of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up if so be that the dead rise not. We're talking gibberish. Ver verse uh, 16, I don't mean to offend anybody that speaks gibberish. Or, amen. <laughs> We're talking foolishness. Let me put it that way. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 16. Hallelujah. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? Verse 17, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Verse 18, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Verse 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are, all, we are of all men most miserable. What can we draw from this passage of Scripture? What, can we, what can conclusions can we come to based on what Paul shared with the Corinthians here? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take a look. Amen. Number one, if there is no resurrection, then Christ did not rise from the dead. If, there, if Christ did not live again after the cross, hallelujah, glory to God, then we have no Savior. What else can we draw? Number two, if no resurrection, preaching is worthless or empty. I'm up here wasting your time. I have no call on my life. There should be no Living Waters Christian Center. We have no mission statement. We have no vision. We have none of that if Christ did not rise from the dead. Number three, if no resurrection, faith is worthless. Faith must have an object, and that object is Jesus Christ. I know people use political statements, keep the faith. You got to keep the faith. Well, keep the faith in what? Your political uh, uh, ambition? Is that what I'm keeping the faith in? 
Faith must have an object, and that object is Jesus Christ. If Christ did not rise from the dead, faith is empty. It is worthless. We are wasting our time. Let's just go out here and sin and, and go crazy and do uh, our most uh, wildest dreams of carnal desires and just die. That's what the world's doing. They're going to get it all. They're going to get all that sin in and then die and say they had a good life. If no resurrection, the apostles were liars. All 11 of them and Paul were liars. Five, if no resurrection, there is no forgiveness and we are still in our sins. We all guilty. We all in our sins if there's no resurrection. If he died on the cross and did not rise again, we would still be in our sins. Some of us think we're still in our sins. Amen. Let me explain sin like this. Amen. Um, before Christ died on the cross and rose again, we were in a state before Father God, before God Almighty of sin. No matter how much good we did, how many ladies we walked across the street, amen, old ladies, amen, how many good deeds or whatever, mankind was in a state of sin, separated from an intimate walk with God. Amen. After Christ died and rose again, now we're in a state, those that believe in Jesus Christ and his resurrection are in a state of of righteousness. Amen. Glory to God. We are in right standing with God. Jesus paid the sin penalty for all of mankind, but only mankind that has accepted him as Lord and Savior and believe he died for their sins and rose for their justification or to make them righteous. Amen. Ha live in this state. Amen. The world that does not believe in Christ still lives in the state of being of sin. We as believers live in a state of being of righteousness. It, it we means we're in right standing with God, right relationship with God. It does not mean that we live right perfectly. Amen. Hallelujah. We are under a sanctification process. We're being processed. Amen. That our standing with God and our subsequent behavior line up. But we are a work in progress. But we're in a state of righteousness. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. And nobody should be offended by that. We have a great opportunity. Jesus has given every one of the seven billion and a half people on the planet the opportunity to receive him as Lord and Savior. We all have the same opportunity. Amen. Number six, if no resurrection, all that have died have died permanently and we will never see them again. Ever wonder why some people cry so hard at the funeral? Because they don't believe they're ever going to see these people again. Now, let's be honest and let me be transparent with you. If the person did not accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, you may not. This is why it's urgent that we share the gospel message. Amen. Let me also say there are some people that got saved and we knew nothing about it. They had a personal talk with God and we knew nothing about it. They never grew to the point where they were manifesting behaviors of holiness. But they had a personal talk with God at some point. Whether it was on their deathbed or whatever. Amen. And we don't know about it. Amen. Amen? Amen. So that is possible as well. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to see my uncle again. My uncle Eddie. I'm going to see my friend Jay again. I'm going to see them again. And, and we're going to be friends and family forever. So as much as I'm sad because I'm human and I'm separated from them for a season, I have hope that I will see them again. Why? Because Jesus rose again from the dead. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When we're overly sad, we don't understand the resurrection. Yes, in the Bible, they mourn for Moses for 40 days, and I understand all that. Hallelujah. There's nothing more wrong with mourning and grieving 
and, and, and we're human and we must go through that process of being separated from those we love. But ultimately, there should be a hope in us that we will see them again and be with them forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. No, it's not the same right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But it'll be even greater in glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And the last one, number seven, if no resurrection, we have no hope and are in great need of mercy. Jesus rising from the dead gives us hope. A confident expectation of good that we shall rise again and those that we know and love that have received him as our Lord and Savior shall rise again as well. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Saints, thank God Jesus did rise from the dead because he did. We shall rise also and have a foundation of our and, and have the foundation of our Christian belief. Amen. It is the foundation. Nothing works without him rising from the dead. Nothing stands. We're wasting our time. It is possible to be saved, amen, or be a Christian and be in church and not have a good understanding about the resurrection and how powerful it is and be living beneath your privilege or beyond the intimacy, amen, that the power of his resurrection affords us, hallelujah, because you don't really understand the importance of his resurrection. Hallelujah, glory to God. It is our source of hope. And we live in a world in dire need of hope. Let me bring it closer to home. We live in a church, amen, that we don't really understand hope. And we go through our highs and our lows and our ups and our downs and our mood changes because we're not looking at the paragon of hope, Jesus Christ and him resurrected. Hallelujah. It's hope for the whole wide world if they choose. Hallelujah. So let's close out on this. Hallelujah. In conclusion, amen. The power of his resurrection is an assurance from Jesus that all believers have eternal life and shall rise again. It empowers the believer to know and trust Jesus intimately and live a life before the world despite what we suffer in life that gives Jesus glory and that testifies of his lordship. Amen. The power of his resurrection is the foundation of our Christian faith, belief and faith because because it persuades us that Jesus is who he said he is. Hallelujah. The son of God, the Lord, our savior, God himself, because he lives, we live and can face tomorrow. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. The power of his resurrection. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you for joining us at I Am Robert A. Brown Ministries. We hope the message blessed you and unveiled the love of Christ to you in a greater way. God bless.